Hi everyone, Shai from RapidSec here, and today I will show you how you can build a content security policy for your website using the same techniques that Stripe are using to protect their website. Now, building a content security policy, CSP, can be very challenging and require quite a lot of expertise, but I will show you how easy it is doing it with RapidSec. We'll be building the same CSP that Stripe has and even avoiding some of the mistakes that they made when building it. Let's get started. This is the Stripe website, and I am looking at their content security policy using a free tool called the CSP Scanner. I did a video about this extension. You can check it out. I'm reviewing great content security policies by PayPal and by GitHub. Today, we're looking at another great example. Stripe are using SHA hashes in their policy, a very strong way to protect against inline script injection. And they've also implemented their own report URI to get violation reports. Stripe are also making great use of CSP in their internal products, but for this demo, we'll only look at the marketing website. One thing to note is that this policy is missing a few directives for Marketo Munchkin and for Quora, and this may block some legitimate marketing assets in the site. When we're building a CSP, we want to be mindful of this. So I'll show you now how you can do this in RapidSec and hopefully also solve this issue with the marketing pixels. In the RapidSec website, go and create an account. We have a 14-day free trial. And by sharing information about your use case, you're basically helping us help you. So please do that. Now, when you're setting up a project, you can put in the site. RapidSec will do an initial scan on the website and suggest the best CSP mode. So basically, this is the amount of strictness you want. Here it recommended compact mode, but strict mode would be for payment gateways or high-end SaaS applications, basic mode for sites with many ads. And now you can choose your integration method. So RapidSec has created a report-only CSP, and you can deploy it to WordPress, to Node.js, to Cloudflare, and what have you. Or you could just use the manual HTTP header that RapidSec has generated, and we export snippets to Apache, Nginx, whatever you may have. Very easy to do. For this demo, I'll be using a Chrome extension that can help me override the default uh, content security policy that was created for the site. So basically, this is only my local environment, but will give us a good mock of what will happen when we actually deploy this policy. So now, with the policy running locally, basically, the content security policy is creating violations because our initial policy did not allow anything. And these violation reports are built into the browser. They get sent to RapidSec and RapidSec can aggregate millions of reports and, and fine tune on what decisions need to be made when you're crafting your policy. This is all in report only mode. So it does not affect the site itself. Uh, here is another page. And once you deploy this to users, you will get a lot of data mapping out your site structure. So now back in the RapidSec admin dashboard, uh, you can see that RapidSec has identified which scripts are running in the page. Uh, so you don't have to basically reverse engineer how Google Analytics works and, and all its different components. Uh, we just detect that it's running and you can allow it with a simple click. Um, you can also, for example, if you have something like Marketo and you know your Munchkin ID, you could add it here, but for now we'll just continue with the star uh, because I don't know their uh, Munchkin ID. And let's allow all of these. So already we, we've we created a, a very uh, similar policy to the original one and, and not breaking the Google Pixel and, and things like that. So let's build this and we'll copy and deploy. Now I'll run this again. Now, after we've deployed this, we're still getting CSP reports, less, but still getting them. So let's see the CSP directives, custom directives in RapidSec that will allow or dismiss. 
and we see that we have two scripts here. So Stripe CDN, yes, I want to allow it. Uh, RapidSync allows for basically you can be more strict, you can be less strict. Uh, we'll just go with this. Seems fine. Um, and unsafe inline, basically these are inline scripts. So you can see uh, mutation observers that they have here and, and many other uh, functionalities. Now, if you recall in the original policy, they used SHA hashes. So I'll show you how to do that now. Search for a hash and you can see that here we have a bunch of them and in RapidSec we can just paste them here and add them and we automatically extract the SHAs needed. Let's add them. Uh, I think there were others in another page so we'll do the same process here. Don't worry for the cases that you may uh, copy duplicates. RapidSec has deduplication automatically. I think we had more on this page and we are good. So we mapped out all these needed hashes. We'll dismiss this unsafe inline for now because we added it via hashes. Style, again, we want to allow the Stripe CDN. If you are not sure about a specific asset, you can click the I icon and find out more about the specific domain where it is being blocked from and what asset exactly is being blocked. I'll just allow this for now. Frame images. And now, uh, remember that broken Quora pixel uh, that didn't work? So let's allow this one so we don't break uh, the marketing pixels. Allow the CDM. Again, if you're unsure about a specific asset, you can go and see what exactly is being blocked and where it's happening. Uh, this image seems to be a legitimate part of the website. If I were Stripe, I would move it to a dedicated CDN. For now, let's allow it. Also, generally, the image source and the other content directives are less prone to, to severe attacks. Uh, so, so you can be more loose with them uh, and, and focus your, uh, your efforts on the scripting and core directives. Last one, font source, let's allow it. And we are good. So, so we now have a new build of our report only CSP. And, and this looks much like the, the one that we saw on the production site. You see it only took minutes uh, with these shots and everything. And also uh, with the Google pixels and the Marketo pixels and the Quora. So we don't break legitimate parts of the website. Let's copy. Deploy. And now we are good. So we have a CSP and we're not breaking the site but it is still only in report-only mode. Let's move to an enforced mode. Let's start with the base URI, live enforced CSP. Now, this is a process you would only do after you've been collecting data in production for at least a few days, because you want to get reports of all the edge cases and all the use cases in your site. Frame ancestors, let's enable it. This directive is the enhanced version of X-Frame options. So whichever site that you have X-Frame options, you really should have CSP Frame Ancestors because it's a more powerful directive. It's more flexible and it gives you reporting. So you actually see where the site is being framed. So it's much better Do use this. For matchup, where can this site submit forms? And you can see that RapidSec by default in compact mode creates the enforced version in slightly less strict uh, settings. So here we have connect.facebook, here we just have star.facebook. And this is to avoid these kind of regressions of breaking uh, the production site. Now, the most important directive in content security policy is the script source. And here we're moving it to enforce mode, 
but if we're considering the case that it may be a bit too strict and too soon, you can downgrade the enforced policy so it has unsafe inline, it's not at risk of breaking uh, the site, it is still protecting the site in many ways until you are ready to, to move to a full enforced mode. Object source, worker, and that's it. So let's assume now we, we don't want to enforce uh, the full policy. So we're still running all the directives in mo monitoring mode, in report only mode, but for the enforced policy, we'll only use a handful of the directives. So the more, most important ones, let's build the CSP. And now you can see that we have two policies. So I'll update the reporting one and update the enforced one. And we are done. So now we have two policies, one stricter for report only mode and getting good violation reports and the other less strict. So we make sure that we don't break the site, but still get that great security posture, just like Stripe has. So there you have it, building a content security policy with RapidSec. Super simple, super easy, and very effective. It will improve your security posture and also block out a wide array of attacks. So go ahead, get started. If you have any issues, click in the support in the application, ask us anything, we're really happy to help. And do click subscribe and check out future videos.